Well hello Internet and welcome to part 23 of my tutorial on how to make Android apps. Today I'm going to cover a whole bunch of things I get asked for all the time. Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Maps inside of Android as well as how to set up a splash screen. We're also going to cover all the API keys and generating signed APKs and a whole bunch of other different things. So why don't we just jump over and look at the finished app. Okay, so here's the finished app. I called it Mappy, and you can see the splash screen right there, and it's going to dissolve and then show the Google Maps, and you can see everything all labeled right there, and here you can see a little marker that I put, as well as the little blue dot, which is my current location, and I'm going to be able to zoom in on whatever I want to zoom in on, and you can see the satellite type of hybrid map right there, and that's going to zoom in to my current location. And basically I'm going to be able to pinch and zoom or use the zoom buttons and move around do pretty much anything that I want. I mean pretty much all the functions you want from Google Maps is going to be here except for directions which if you guys really want that just leave comments below and I'll get into that a little bit. I just want to keep this as simple as possible. And you can also see here's a little marker and whenever I click on it it says hello. So why don't we jump over and write all the code to make it work. Okay, so you saw the finished application. Now I'm going to walk you through the entire process of getting API keys, which really seems to confuse people. What you want to do is you need a Google account, of course, and you're going to have to go to console.developers.google.com forward slash project da 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 right there. And whenever you do, you're going to see this screen, and you're going to come up here and click on Create Project. And whenever you do, you're going to give it a project name. It's going to give you a project ID automatically, and you're going to click on Create. Then you're going to see this screen right here. And you're going to click on Enable and API. And then you're going to see a whole giant list you're going to have to scroll through. Specifically, you're looking for Google Maps Android API version 2. This is what you're going to use. It might have version 2.2 or something later on if you are watching this tutorial later on, but whatever. And you're going to come over here and click on the off button and that's going to open that up and it's going to say do you want to enable this put a check here and click on accept. After you do that you're going to go over to APIs and authorization and click on credentials right here and you're going to say that you want to create a new public API key right with this guy so just click on this and then this guy's going to open up and we're going to click on Android key and then you're going to see all of this stuff here and I'm going to show you exactly how to go through and get these keys and all that. So then what you're going to need to do is go in inside of Android Studio where you have your project where you want to use your Google Maps. This is all for Google Maps if I didn't say that before and we're going to click on generate a signed APK under build and whenever you do this is going to pop up and we're just going to click on next and then this is going to pop up and you're going to click on create new and then you're going to fill in all your information where you want this to be stored you're going to want to give it a password this is going to be an alias you're going to use another password just leave this the way it is and then type in your information right here and then click on OK and whenever you do that's going to fill in all that information for you you can decide if you want to use remember password or not click on next and then you're going to go in here and type in your password again and click set password after that this is going to open up and we're going to click on finish and then then what you're going to need to do is go into your terminal or command line if you're on Windows and you're going to type in key tool dash list dash v dash key store and the name of your key that you want to use. You're going to enter your password. It's going to be the same password as before. And after you do that, all of this stuff's going to pop up here. And then finally, you're going to get this key right here, SHA1. This is going to be very important. You're then going to pop back over into your browser where you had this, and you're going to type in the key, the SHA key. And then you're going to put a semicolon and the name of whatever your project is. So com, new thing think tank is going to be whatever it is for you and then it's going to be whatever and then it's going to be in my situation I called my project Mappy. Type in all of that stuff and then click on update. After you click on update it's going to give you a private API key. This is what you're going to want to copy and paste over into your Android manifest here in a little bit. And this is the Android manifest file and this is exactly what you're going to do right after the activity ends and right before application ends you're going to type in all of this stuff. Android name and it's going to be maps v2.api key and then right here is where you're going to paste your API key. Once again that API key is this right here which is over in your browser. And that's all you're going to need to do on that end and I'm also going to get in the end of the tutorial I'm going to show you how to fix a very common error that comes up whenever you're trying to implement Google Maps inside of Android. So now I'm going to jump over and start creating our application. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up a splash screen as well as also setting up Google Maps just like you saw with the application at the very beginning of the tutorial. We're going to use five different files here. We're going to have activity splash screen.xml, splash screen.java, the Android manifest of course, which you already saw and we're going to add more to it, activity main.xml, and main activity.java. You're also, this is inside of Android Studio, you're going to want to go into your Gradle scripts right here and double click on this and you're going to want to make sure that down inside of here one of your dependencies is the play services guy and what we're going to do with this to make this work is we're going to open up the SDK manager that's this guy right here just click on that and it's going to open up on your screen load everything and you're going to go way down here to the very bottom and you're going to want to make sure you put a check mark in here next to Google Play services this is where the Google Maps stuff is and you're going to want to install it. I have already installed it and I'm sure if you've done this put a check inside of there and then click on install packages and then authorize it to install. So that's what you're going to have to do there. Then you're going to go into your application up here and right click on that and then come down inside of here and look for open module settings. Click on that and then this guy's going to open up right here and you're going to click on dependencies and then you're going to want to come down here and click on the plus sign and library dependency and you're going to see a whole bunch of these guys open up. The one that you're going to want to load in here, I already did load it in, is Play Services, this guy right here. So you're going to click on that and you're going to click on OK. But I already did it. As you can see right here, there is my dependency loaded in there. And then after you do that, click on OK and you're going to have everything set up. And this is actually going to automatically load inside of your build Gradle file. You don't have to put it inside of there. So that's great. OK, so we got all the hard stuff out of the way. And like I said, at the very end of the tutorial, I'll show you a workaround if you're having any problems. So this is our splash screen. And to be able to put an image inside here, I just went and got the Google Maps and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go down here to copy Google Maps like this. You can copy in any way you want to do it. And then you're going to go over to your drawable folders and you're going to right click on it and click on paste. And that is going to paste in the Google Maps logo and you're going to be able to use that as your splash screen. So now to get this to work for our splash screen, what we're going to do is we're going to create an image view. And you can see right there is the width and I'm just going to have that be wrap content like this and also have this be wrap content. You're going to want to come in here and give it an ID. Click on that and I'm just going to call this image logo because that's what it is. And of course all the code that's in this tutorial you're going to be able to find in a link in the description here. And I'm going to say that I want this to be centered in parent. There that is. And I'm going to mark that as true. And then I have to give it a source and that's just going to be in the drawable folder. And then I called it Google Maps logo. And there it is. And that is all you're going to have to do for activity splash screen.xml. Now let's jump over into splash screen.java and set all that up. Okay, so here we are. First thing we're going to do is create a constant that is going to define how long the splash screen is going to wait before it jumps over into activity main. So I'm just going to call this splash screen delay like that and give it a value of 3000. That means it's going to wait three seconds before it jumps over into the activity main, which is going to have our maps and everything inside of it. Come down here inside of on create and I'm going to use a handler like I did in the last tutorial to, as a timer so that we'll be able to wait here and the handler that we're going to have to import here is going to be import android.os .os handler that guy right there so import that come down here and then we're going to go post delayed and we're going to create a new runnable thread here and we can just come over here to this little light bulb and click on implement methods and we're going to implement run of course and click on OK. It's going to put all that in there for us. Don't worry about any of these errors. Now what we want to do is open up main activity after three seconds goes by so that means we need to issue an intent or create an intent to open main activity and we're going to have to splash in here with the splash screen dot this and then define what we want to open, which is going to be main activity and class, close that off, and then just start activity. And that is basically as easy as it is to go in here and actually have main activity open after three seconds. Of course, we also want to kill the splash screen so that it is not used. And then come over here, move this over a little bit. And then right after this guy, we're going to define how long we want the delay to last. And 
and put a semicolon. And that is almost everything we need to implement our splash screen. Next we need to go into the Android manifest and define the splash screen as an activity as well as the main activity as an activity. So here we are in the Android manifest and I have all the permissions that we're going to need. I'm going to walk through rather than type them all out. So we're going to be able to use Google Maps. We're going to need to get all of these guys and get permission to be able to use all of them. So the permission for their internet, access network state, write external storage, access course location, access find location, and internet, as well as this guy. Google Android Providers, GSF, Permission. Once again, all the code is available in the description, and it's free, of course. Also going to come down here, put this permission inside of here, and you're going to use whatever your package name is for this guy right here. So you can see it right there. And if we jump over here, you can see our package name that's right there. So just copy and paste that over. Yes, this is supposed to be signature. I don't have anything there on purpose. This is for using OpenGL. You're also going to need that. And you have all of this information. Once again, you're going to need to go in here for the Google Play services and make sure this automatically should go inside of there. If it isn't inside of there, it wasn't set up with the beta, the Gradle build that we handled before, you're going to have to type that in there. And then that brings us down here where we're going to have to define that we do not not want main activity open but instead we want splash screen.java to open whenever this is all loaded up so just come in here and type in splash screen and that will open up that first and then we'll jump over into main activity after we're all done with that we are still going to have to define main activity as an activity though so activity and the name for this is going to be main activity of course and let's go in and give it a label and just go at string app name works good enough and then close that off and then down here is where you're going to put your API key and if you don't remember from before this is in the browser you're going to copy and paste this and paste it over inside of the Android manifest and that is all you're going to need to do for your Android manifest file and now I'm going to jump into activity main.xml and put everything in there in regards to the Google map okay so here we are and I'm just going to come in here and create a fragment we're going to have this match parent and we're going to have this be match parent as well. I'm going to give this an ID. There we are. And I'm just going to call it map. And then we're also going to give it a name. And I'm going to have this be com.googleandroid.gms.maps.map fragment. And you're going to want that to be the same. And then close that off. And that is all we're going to need to do to get the Android Google Map to work. And the final thing we need to do is go into main activity and define exactly all of the parameters we want to use with the Google Map. Okay, so right inside of main activity, the very first thing I'm going to do is define a latitude and longitude that I want to put a mark in here for. Lat and long, and let's just call this Derek position is equal to new lat long, and then put latitude and longitude. So let's go 40 and negative 79, works out. Then we're going to have to define our Google Map class that we're going to be using a lot here. So Google Map and then make sure that you have all the proper inputs or imports. And I'm just gonna call this Google Map to keep this simple. And then I'm gonna go down inside of here, inside of on create. We need to verify that we can interact with Google Map. So I'm gonna put a try block inside of here. And I'm gonna say if Google Map is equal to null, and I'll go Google Map equal to map fragment, and then get fragment manager, and then find fragment by ID. And I'll just go r dot id dot map and that's what we named it and then after this go dot get map and there we go then this guy's going to want a catch block underneath of here so let's go catch and just keep this simple exception e and then e print stack trace and i put an extra equal sign in there let's get rid of that and now that we have this set up we can define all the different attributes we want our map to have so the very first thing i'm going to do is show a satellite map with roads there's a couple different ways to do this, but I can just go Google Map dot and I can set my map type. And there's a couple options, like I said. So we can go Google Map dot and you can see right here, hybrid, none, normal, satellite, terrain, all the different options you can have there in regards to the map type you're gonna show. I'm gonna have this be map type and it's very easy to go in there and change it just like that. So if you wanna have some sort of button or something on the screen that'll allow you to change the map type, you know, you can just go in there and do that. Let's say I also wanna place a dot on my current location. I can just go map dot set my location enabled and then say true and it's going to put a dot on the screen where I'm located. I could also turn the traffic layer on Google map dot set traffic enabled and just type in true. You could also have these be false of course. 
Google Map. If we want to enable indoor maps, set indoor, enabled, also marked as true. Of course, that's going to be only where it's available. Google Map again. If you want to set 3D buildings, again, where that is an option, mark that as true. If you want to show the zoom buttons, we go get UI settings and then go set zoom controls enabled and mark that as true. And that's going to bring on those little zoom buttons, which are helpful or get rid of them if you want a cleaner interface. If you want to create a marker on the screen for pretty much any latitude and longitude that you have, you can do that as well. And we can just go Google Map dot add marker. You can add a ton of markers if you want, have an array of them or whatever. New marker options. And then right after this, you're going to go and put your position inside of there. And then Derek position was the latitude and longitude that I had to find right here. Oh, there it is, this guy right here. And then if you want to have a title pop up, if they click on that marker, you can just come in here and we can do something like hello. And there you go. That is all you're going to have to do code wise to make this guy work. And if you do ever get an error, this is probably going to be the error you're going to see. You're going to see that basically it's going to say ensure that the Google Maps Android API is enabled, ensure that the following Android keys exist. If you see this in your Logcat panel inside of here, all you need to do is copy and paste this guy, copy all of this the whole way down to the end of your project name, and then jump back over into your browser right here where we typed in what we had previously and copy and paste what we had in that error message into here and click on update. And what you're going to see is a new API key is going to be generated. Of course, you could come in here again and click on edit allowed Android applications and create a whole brand new one. And it's not going to get rid of the old API key unless you click on delete. So, okay, guys, that is how we're going to set up splash screens, how we're going to use Google Maps and how to generate signed APKs. Hope that covered a lot of the questions I've been getting. Otherwise, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.